Well, hey there, guys. I am back. We're going to do something a bit different today. There is noise behind me. It is the glorious noise of a 3D printer doing its thing, printing in 3D. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, for those of you not aware, this is filament for a 3D printer. These are two of the, the rolls that I have. It comes in so many different colors and styles. Um, these are just two of the ones that I have. So this is like a coppery, shiny, I call it silk. I don't know why they came up with that name. I guess because when it's all done, it has that kind of image. Um, this is, well, you can see here, this is a transition. It's a translucent blue, green, kind of a translucent -y white. Um, I mean, and I just have these rolls here because they're going to come into play later on. There's different types of, of this filament, this plastic. This is called PLA, which I can't remember what it stands for, but, you know, it's commonly known. Um, there's different types for different applications. I'm relatively new to the 3D printing, but I have been doing it like crazy lately because I just love it so much, making all different things. In looking for the different kind of patterns and styles, I was looking for things that we could do on this channel. And one of the things I found were a couple different knife-related things. And I found a pattern for a 3D printed butterfly knife Bally song trainer. And this is one I've already done. Aiden picked this filament because he said it looked like it's anodized. And I was so proud of him for just knowing that. So we're going to walk through, we're going to make one right here in this video. Now the process for printing can be lengthy depending on a lot of different things. So of course, we're not going to see the whole thing. I'm going to, I'm going to fast forward and we're going to do some some magic and stuff like that but we're gonna we're gonna 3d print one of these and so we're gonna take some of this filament you're gonna see some of the printing we're gonna put it together and there we go so the first thing we need to do is select what we're gonna use and uh, you know we're gonna be making handles and the pins and the blade and uh, let's get to it this is what we call the slicing software this one just happens to come with my printer, whatever. There's lots of different ones out there. This is what actually takes the 3D object, the STL file, and turns it into G-code, which is what the printer reads to create a 3D object. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab both of the STL files we're working with. We've got the handle and the blade, and we've got the pins. And in the slicing software, you can see this. Uh, you can rotate it around in the 3D space. You can see the whole thing. Now, slicing software is different than the CAD, computer-aided design, whatever design software we're using. You can't manipulate the objects in this. You can't create objects. That's how you get your STL file. In here, we can see the whole 3D space. Um, we can see if we need to create supports in this case, you can see everything lays perfectly flat on what will be the print bed. That's what the, the ground represents here. But you can get a 3D view. You can zoom in, zoom out. You can see exactly what you're working with. And then that prepares you to know what kinds of settings we need. And settings are really important. So we're only going to be working with the blade and the handles right now. And unfortunately, in this particular design, they all print as, as one. I'd love to separate out the blade from the handles, but that requires knowing what the hell you're doing, and I don't when it comes to CAD software. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the, the filament, which is PLA. Now, there are a whole bunch of settings here that you can change, and there's a thousand more that I don't even have on screen. Our infill density is basically how strong our internal structure is going to be. That's important. Our filament temperature and our print bed temperature, those are important. Uh, and those change with different materials, so we want to make sure we get them down right. We've got the speed of our printing. Those change depending on what you're doing and what filament. Uh, your initial layer, that's important. Uh, you know, all these things really don't 
matter in terms of explanation right now, but I'm just showing you some of the some of the more important settings that you have to get right when you're doing things. Um, you know, there's you could do supports. Like I mentioned, we're not going to do supports for this one. Um, ironing is a thing that you can do. It keeps it really smooth instead of giving you those lines on 3D prints. So when we slice, it's going to actually give us our code. You can see here exactly how long it's going to take. And this lets us go through all the different layers. And this is basically what the 3D printer prints for each different layer as it goes. So this is exactly what the filament comes out as as it goes through the printing process. It's really cool that you can see the different layers here before it actually prints. I like doing this, it's just fun to watch. The printer will accept SD cards, uh, thumb drives, and or you could hook it up direct USB. So we're just gonna save it on a thumb drive and we're gonna get ready to put that in the printer and there we go. All right, so I've got this filament and it is a it does like a, a blue to green to almost a, a white kind of translucent thing. But, however, comma, it does kind of a jade. So, of course, we're going to use this. Now, the problem is it's kind of, it does that transition when you least expect it. So, I'm going to do something. It's a little unnatural for working with an FDM printer. I'm going to take some of this off the spool so that we have the jade, the whole jade, and nothing but the jade. And I will manually stand by to pause the print and reload some more and uh, continue the green printing. Now, if you recall, in the slicing software in Cura, it showed us exactly how much we're going to need in length. I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. I think it was something like eight meters. Uh, that's great. I don't read instructions. And I also am not about to measure out eight meters of, of green filament. So I am just going to, there, see how the transition comes up? And we start going from that green to the whitish color. So. Here it's clearly the whitish color. I think we've got a little bit more green left in it before we get there. And you know, there's kind of a whitish jade. There's that the clearish ghosty jade. So I think that's about good. And that just might be enough to get us through. There's still a little transitioning color there. I know this is probably the least exciting part of all this. But, let's see, no. I'm gonna clip it there and we'll see where it gets us. And I'm gonna make sure that this is not tangled. We don't want like a crazy ass slinky all tangled up. On the printer, there's a spool holder. So basically, normally you just slide this on the spool holder and it pulls it as it needs. So we're going to take this somewhere out there. There's a fellow 3D printer who is like going to report me to the 3D printing police right now for doing this. Now there is also, there's ways, there are printers where you can do multiple colors and stuff like this. Like where, you, and, and you can, you can uh, actually put into the G code, which is G code is also what CNC machines use to, to run their operations and everything where you can program in a pause at a certain point, at a certain layer, so that you can do things like change colors. The problem is I'm not trying to change colors at a certain point. I'm trying to only use this greenish color on this roll of filament that changes color as it goes. So it's a little bit different. I can't program something into the G code to stop when it goes to transition to a different color. That's not something that you can do. Or if it is, I'm not aware of it. And there are many things in the world that I'm not aware of. But this is how I know how to do this. So I'm gonna get this rolled up and then we're gonna feed it in and we're gonna get it started.
I have two sets. Now, because remember, I showed you the pattern before the blade automatically prints with, with the handles. Um, I kind of, I had no choice but to print the blade. Now, I didn't want a jade blade. I wanted the jade looking handles and they came out pretty cool. I love that this is translucent. So this is the, the infill to give it strength, you know, so it's not just a hollow piece of plastic. And it kind of looks cool. It would be great if, if it could be. Now we could have printed it without the infill and just had it completely translucent, but it would be rather flimsy then, you know, it, would be, it wouldn't have any strength to it really. Um, there are ways to do it. You could thicken up the, the walls but that would kind of defeat the purpose of it being translucent like that. And then it would, I, you know, whatever. Uh, but I think it's cool that you can kind of see that in there. So what I did was I took another filament, which is like this kind of iron looking one, and I printed another set. So we have a blade that is, I didn't want to do like a shining silver, but I have a whole nother set. So I've got the blade and I've got these handles. So we'll actually assemble two. Then for the pins, which you didn't see anything of, um, I've got kind of a gold color, the pins and the little caps. And then I also ran off a set in the iron color. The reason that these are taking them off the print bed sometimes can, you know, it, it sticks a little bit. And so, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes and they, they pop off as you're removing them. But so I'm thinking the iron pins with the jade handles and the gold, with the iron handles, I think will look pretty good. Um, and we'll put it together. Now, you gotta be careful because this is just thin plastic. So you can't force it. You gotta, you gotta work with it gently. Putting together Aiden's, I learned they will snap if you're not careful. In order to make sure these things stay, we're gonna use a little bit of glue. Now, you can use like crazy glue, stuff like that to put this together. What works really well, though, I found, is some glue that I use just for building models. And this is, um, it's its not really a glue. It's, it's a chemical cement that actually melts plastic together. It makes a really good bond because now the chemical, the, the plastic ends are, are fused, molecularly fused. Um, so we'll be using that. We're also going to be using a little bit of HP 100 just to make sure that our joints our, our pins are, are really nice and, and fluid and everything. So, we're gonna get going on this. So, we're gonna have jade handles, iron blade, iron handles, jade blade, and the pins. Now, when you put this one together, I learned this mistake on Aiden's also, there are these internal pins, and you gotta be careful of where you put them because the first time I did Aiden's, I, I wasn't, I just didn't know. And how did I do it? I think I, I must have assembled it upside down or something um, because I had these pins in the wrong place. And so it didn't let the knife close. So anyway, so that's something to look out for. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that there's no what we would call flash in building scale models. It's, it's just extra plastic around, you know, because you want everything nice and flush. And I have already trimmed the brim and everything off these. So we're not worried about that. So this is where I'm going to use the HP 100. And I'm just going to give a little bit inside that area. And I'm using the HP 100 because I know it's not going to hurt the plastic at all. It's not going to like start dissolving it. We're not worried about anything like that. And that's just going to make sure we have nice fluid motion. All right. Now we also got to make sure we're using the right top part of the handle so it matches. So now for the pins. I'm gonna use a sanding stick just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Because these can get a little stringy when they print. Is there a stringy? Yeah. See that's a little stringy. So we'll get that 
taken care of. A little bit of excess plastic there will take off so it fits nice and flush and even. So that we take this little cap and put it on here and hopefully it fits nicely and of course it's not going to. Had this problem doing Aiden's as well and this is the part where if you're really too rough with it you can snap that little pin so we've got to be careful there we go now here's where the glue comes in so this kind of glue is also used by um architects who build uh plastic models styrene models of their buildings and stuff Again, it's, it's not a glue, it's just a chemical formulation that melts plastics together. Um, so we want to make sure we get it just on that joint and not on anything else. There we go. Okay, pin, handle. Now, while I'm doing this, let me ask you guys a question. Is it just me? Or is every Megan Trainer song the same song with a different title? Think about that as we're doing this. Okay. And blue time. Now we're also going to put some glue see where the handles mate there I put some glue there just to make sure that we have solid joints and this glue I mean this glue I keep calling it glue you know whatever it sets very quickly so we just got to hold it for a second and then it's good and see now we're gonna there's where those two pins mate up there We'll just give a little dab on that joint to make sure they're nice and tight. Now we've got a complete sort of jade handled knife. Now I'm going to give just a couple minutes to make sure this glue all cures and everything. Let me assemble this one and then we'll take a look at how it works. All done. Now remember these are plastic printed things so they're not going to have the tolerances and everything of a real you know metal thing but for a trainer for just something fun to do for a kid to be you know you want to teach them the ins and outs and and some basic safety not bad and the action you know is pretty good it doesn't have latches or anything but it's fun this one I need to work it in a little bit, I guess, but. So, cool things that you can do with 3D printers. Um, and, you know, so now Ethan is, is, Ethan's getting interested in knife stuff. He likes to do unboxings with me. He's very proud of his little, you know, one and a half inch blade neck knife that lives in here with me, but that he can use when we go outside together and everything. So this is the kind of thing I can give him. You know, it looks like it has a blade, but obviously it's not going to hurt anybody. So it's the kind of thing I can make for him and he can have and he can keep. It, it, yeah, I guess it was a little pointy over there, but um, technically, could you could you carry it and defend yourself with one good punch? I guess you could. 
I guess you could, because it does have a pointiness to it. Um, th these pins, like I said, are not the strongest thing in the world, so if, if you were to hit, <laughs> like, a leather jacket, these pins might break, but... Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. This 3D printer is, is a lot of fun, and I'm really enjoying it. So maybe next time we'll do... Um, they have plans for an OTF and plans for a button, you know, um, side opening automatic. If you guys want to see that. So what do you guys think? Fun and uh, useful use of materials or is this just novelty? Or, uh, you know, if you, if you had one, would you, I mean, if you had the ability, would you want one? Would you make one yourself? If I were to make a couple for a giveaway, would it be something that you'd want to enter? Um, what do you think of them? So anyway, I thought it'd be a fun video to do and just show how, you know, with the right materials, if you have it, how easy it is to do. And uh, what do you think they're good for? If you had one, what would you use it for? What would be your purpose? So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was kind of fun to see the process and what we end up with when we're all done. Remember, you guys are absolutely awesome, and I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.